Is this tiny board about to replace my current home server? Meet the Zima Blade, a single board computer, packing hardware transcoding, upgradable RAM, PCI expansion and even SATA ports. With a small footprint and a TDP of just 10 watts, could it replace my full-sized PC home server? In this video I'll push it to its limits to find out. Today we are diving into the Zima Blade, a compact single board computer designed by the original creators of Zima Board. It comes in two main configurations and with a starting price of just under 80 bucks, it's a real competitor to something like a Raspberry Pi. This unit was sent to me for a review and I got the more powerful version, the Zima Blade 7700 with an S kit. I'm really excited to see how it stacks up and I'll be sharing my full experience with you in this video. The board comes with CASA OS pre-installed and it is something I've been using for a few months already. It is a simple user interface which allows you to install a lot of apps without actually using the command line. It's a perfect way for a beginner to get into the home lab world without wasting much time. CasaOS is awesome, but I prefer using it from Ubuntu. So I'll be installing Ubuntu server on my Zima Blade instead. For some of you that may be wondering how the Zima Blade runs Windows, don't worry because I'll be trying it out as well. After the OS is set up, I'll install a couple of applications I usually use on my server and push the Zima Blade to its limits to see how it compares with my current home server. This video was sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is one of the biggest PCB manufacturers in China and the special thing about them is their crazy capabilities, allowing you to order boards up to 30 layers. They have lots of different services and the most interesting ones are CNC milling and 3D printing. They can print in all sorts of materials like resin, nylon, PLA, ABS, etc. But the special thing is that they can print in metal too, which is just crazy. Upload your files and get your quote instantly by clicking on the first link in the video description. Thanks PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Only 10 days after they first contacted me and all of the boxes were on my desk. It was around a week of shipping time from China to Europe without any extra fees in my case, which was just awesome. I did get a bunch of stuff like the special adapters and cables, this weird thing which is actually really cool, the NAS kit, the Zima blade and a 16GB stick of RAM. This thing actually surprised me the most. It's called CyberEyes 1 and at first sight I didn't even know what it was. When I took it out of the box I realized it's a super compact 65 watt power delivery charger which does up to 20 volts of output voltage and has a built-in dock with two fast USB ports, an HDMI port that can handle up to 4K 30fps and an integrated 1TB SSD. You get this cute case for it and inside it is a 1 meter USB C to C cable along with these rubber bands which allow you to change the accent color of the brick. Since my outlet won't fit this plug, adapters are included as well. The charger is pretty cool but you clicked on this video to see the Zima blade so let's take a look at it. We get a thank you card, a user manual, the mini PC and at the bottom of the box we have one SATA and one C to C cable. The first time I took it out of the box I was stunned how good it looked. It's really clean and stealthy. I still can't believe this small thing is a whole PC. And if you were stunned at my recent upload schedule make sure to leave this video a like and a subscribe to the channel would be awesome. The stick of frame is missing and it is something you need to buy separately. But these guys were nice enough to send me a 16GB stick of frame as well. To pop it in we need to bend this side piece until it comes off. Once we remove the two screws at the top the clear plastic can be taken off and now we have access to the dim slot. Installing the RAM stick is pretty self-explanatory and after we are done we can assemble it all back together. A USB type C port for power and I did get this 12 volt power supply for it. 12 volts is one of the standard USB PD rails so it should work with all USB PD and QC chargers that support 12 volts. Next to the USB type C we have a USB type A connector and sadly it is the only one. Next is a gigabit network port and all the way to the left we have a mini display port for connecting an external display. I was again lucky enough to get a mini display to HDMI adapter included in the box. On the other side we have two 6 gig SATA ports and one connector for power. With the included cable we can connect only one hard drive but if you get this special SATA Y cable you can connect two in total. The only thing remaining on the outside is the PCIe X4 slot and it is a big fail in my opinion. It's a 4x slot meaning that none of the cards I have laying around fit and a lot of people were complaining about the whole enclosure design how it doesn't allow these cards to be plugged in without removing this metal bracket. So to use it you have to remove the bracket or use a card razor. I did cover everything on the outside of the Zima blade and before powering it on let's take a quick look at the inside. Removing the side parts same as before and removing the clear plastic by undoing the two screws at the top. The only things remaining are the actual PCB which holds all of the components and on the bottom we have the 
anodized aluminum heatsink. To remove the heatsink, I'll undo the two remaining screws and remove the board. The first thing that caught my attention was definitely this 15 kilos of thermal paste they put in. But except that, the board looks really clean. Let's take care of the thermal paste and take a better look at the CPU. It didn't have any markings that could lead me to anything useful, but the sticker on the PCB says Intel N3450 and so does the description. I guess we'll see what Linux says later. It's an x86 CPU which supports Intel QuickSync, making it perfect for a small media server. It can transcode up to 4K 8-bit using H.265, a perfect little CPU for Jellyfin. For storage, the board has an integrated 32GB eMMC chip and RAM is upgradable, but it's only a single DDR3 DIMM slot and it supports up to 16GB. I'll clean the heatsink and put some fresh MX4 paste and assemble it all back together. After everything is assembled, I have one more thing I haven't shown you yet and it's the NAS kit. The Zima blade is marketed mostly as a DIY NAS, so it makes perfect sense they make custom hard drive brackets. It's nothing special but a really clean piece of anodized aluminum extrusion. It has rubber feet on the bottom and two slots for 3.5 inch drives. The Zima blade is supposed to chill on top like this and this is how the whole setup may look in the end. This bracket is a pretty cool upgrade but I imagine you can 3D print one as well. As I earlier said, the Zima blade comes with Casa OS pre-installed, but I bet not many of you are familiar with it, so I'll be installing Windows 10 and Ubuntu server on my board. I'll take my other keyboard and mouse combo and since I won't pull this off without more than a single USB port, I'll need a USB hub. One USB for keyboard and mouse and the other for my Vento USB drive which has Windows 10 installation loaded. I'll take the network cable and connect it up and for the video, I'll take the mini display port to HDMI adapter and connect the other end to my capture card. And finally, with everything connected, let's power it on for the first time. For the first time, I'll let it boot into CasaOS. Default username is CasaOS and password is the same. Let's ping google.com to see if we are connected to the network and it looks like we are. With the network connected, the first thing I'll do is update all the repositories on our system. After all of the updates are done, I'll reboot the board and proceed by installing NeoFetch. NeoFetch will show us exactly which hardware is installed on this board. It's a Debian based OS and the CPU is Intel Celeron N3450 with integrated graphics and 60GB of RAM. It looks like everything is fine, so let's take a quick look at the web UI before moving to Windows. CasaOS is mainly used from the web browser, so I'll quickly log in to my router to find the IP address of my new Zima blade. I found the current IP, but this will change almost every time I power cycle it. It would be a good idea to set it static, so we always know which one it is. With a static IP set and the OS updated, let's take a look at the web UI. It guides you through the first time setup and after it's done, you can see how it looks. It's a very clean dashboard which shows you all of your statistics. You can browse files without hacking the shit out of your computer, download and install a ton of apps, again without typing any commands, and the apps that are available are really cool. You can install stuff like Home Assistant, Jellyfin Motion Eye, run your own Minecraft server with your own hardware, create a net blocker for your whole network, run a VPN and much much more. CasaOS is covered and in the next step I'd like to see how it runs Windows 10. With my installation media USB drive connected, I'll reboot the Zima blade and go inside the BIOS. I'll change the first boot option to my USB drive and inside Ventoy, I'll select the Windows 10 installation. Then I went through the normal Windows installation and after around 15 minutes Windows 10 Pro Edition was up and running. At first it felt a little slow, but after installing all of the updates I was surprised how snappy it was. The CPU is running at just 1.1 GHz and the idle temps are around 55 degrees which is a bit higher than expected. Going through File Explorer, web browsing and watching videos all felt just fine. Compared to something like a Raspberry Pi, which is in a similar price range, the difference is not even comparable. If you decide to use it as a Windows machine, I would recommend installing Windows on a separate SSD, since this 32GB integrated drive is kinda unusable as it filled up right after installation was complete. I wanted to transfer some 4K MKV files to see how the board handles it, but there was literally no storage left. So the next best thing I could do is play the videos directly from my NAS. If you're interested in how to set one up for yourself, make sure to check my last video for a complete guide. It was playing a 4K 10-bit MKV video file without any issues. I couldn't believe a 10W TDP CPU was able to pull this off. So to recap Windows, it feels faster than the old laptop you found in your closet, it's great for light web browsing, liking this video and subscribing to the channel, viewing media, etc. If you decide to go with Windows, definitely install it on an external SSD since the internal storage won't be large enough. And now let's see how this board handles tasks of a basic 
home server. I'll install Ubuntu server and if you're interested in more details about the installation, check out my DIY home server video. I'll install the system on a separate SSD drive this time so I don't run out of storage while testing it out. Ubuntu is where this thing really shines and it feels like a hundred times faster than a Pi for example. With the system up and running, I'll install Casa OS again and run a couple of apps to see how it stacks up against my current home server. To run on S, you don't really need much and the next best thing to test out would be a media server. I'll quickly set up Jellyfin and try playing some 4K files to see how the hardware acceleration works. It's working much better than on my home server with a Xeon CPU and this is a huge plus for me. From time to time I do like to run my micro server from my own hardware, so let's see if it's going to handle it well. I'll set up Crafty and log into the server. With only me connected everything ran perfectly fine. This board draws way less power, it's more compact and it's totally silent. It's able to run all of the things I usually use, so I actually do consider moving from standard PC hardware to this single board instead. It's an awesome little low power PC able to run a lot of stuff which will be perfectly fine for most users. The whole thing does get quite hot, there's only a single USB port and the 4x PCI slot is kinda in the wrong place but I really appreciate the SATA ports and the fact that the RAM is upgradable. I really like how the whole thing looks set up as it doesn't take up much space and overall looks really cool because of the clear plastic cover. I would definitely pick this over a Raspberry Pi but there may be better options in the mini PC world with the N100 CPU for example. If you have any questions and if there's something I didn't cover let me know down below and I hope you enjoyed watching the video same as I did making it. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.